Hey there, this is Matt Williams, international trainer for the Facts and Document Distribution Group. When you attend one of my classes, one of the things that I do is draw a diagram of how all the modules in Write Facts fit together. Now, when I do the same class online, there's not really a good way of drawing that diagram. There is a whiteboard tool in our online classroom, but it's not exactly fluid like a whiteboard. So I thought I'd draw in a notebook. So this is going to be a, maybe there's a new series of videos um, called notebook diagrams. So let's get started. Uh, open up my notebook and start drawing it out. So the idea here is I want to show how all the modules fit together inside of WriteFacts. And, you know, right at the kind of the center of everything is the server module. So I'm going to draw a little box around that. And the server module is the director of the life of the facts. Uh, this is where everything starts. Uh, this guy uh, manages faxes going in and faxing go faxes going out. Uh, it stores information and works with information that's stored in one of two main places. Well, there's actually three places, but two really main places. That is on the file system, which I'll just say FS. And the other place is in a database. And that database is Microsoft SQL Server. It's always Microsoft SQL Server. It's never anything else, at least with version 9 and later. Um, so it's always Microsoft SQL Server. Now, the server module does, it, server module writes directly to the file system and reads from the file system, but it does not read and write directly to the SQL Server. Instead, it goes through a database module. So the SQL Server uh, uh, talks to the database module, and the database module talks to SQL Server, and server talks to the database module. And that's basically how uh, most of the communications with the SQL Server actually happens. It goes through this database module. OK, so that's interesting. But usually, the server is not working alone. Uh, there's actually a user involved, usually. So let's draw this little user. Uh, and we'll call him Matt. And Matt has a routing code. And that routing code, let's say, is 1234. OK, so um, the user is going to be using two main types of applications. He might be uh, working with a Windows application, or he could be working with a web based application. And in either of those two situations, it could be the client or the administration tool. So let's go with the Windows based client first. And we've got um, FaxUtil, which is really the main client. Okay, so it could be working with FaxUtil or he could actually be an administrator and working with EFM. And if he's using the web clients, well, there's a similar one, similar utility for both functions. First off, there is WebUtil. And then there's also Web EFM. So those are the I guess four main applications that are used to work with WriteFax. So, in order for FaxUtil or WebUtil to communicate with the server, it actually goes through a kind of a middleman. So, those middlemen are the RPC module. Or the remoting module.
So I'm going to look, draw a little line there. RPC module communicates to the server module. And WebUtil goes by a remoting down to the server module. OK, so we've got some uh, uh, a connection from the end user to the server via RPC or remoting. OK, so let's say that this user sends out a Microsoft Word document, MS Word. And he wants to send that document out on a fax board. Well, way down here at the other end, we've got a uh, fax board. So this could be a Brook Trout board, uh, also known as a Dialogic or Cantata board, depending on uh, how long you've had your board. Uh, and we need to get this Word document down to the fax board. Well, the fax board only really understands how to deal with TIFF files. So we've got to convert it to a TIFF file, but right now it's a Microsoft Word document. And we do that in two steps. First off, we convert from, let's say, whatever the native format is, in this case, a doc file, we convert that to a PCL file. And then, uh, you know, we do different, use different tools for that conversion of native to PCL. And then we've got one little uh, tool that converts from PCL to TIFF. Uh, and all the uh, different types of documents are going to go through that conversion process. Now, to do that conversion, we actually work with uh, another module ju that just does a lot of work. And that is called the work server. Now, when you first install WriteFax, there are actually three work servers. Uh, that are installed, and you can add more. You can add up to 15 work servers. So the server module is going to communicate with the work server. Now the work server is going to use some other tools, and hopefully, <clears throat> hopefully that tool is is going to include Microsoft Office. And so hopefully Microsoft Office is installed on the WriteFax server or on whatever server this work server is installed on. And the work server is going to work with Microsoft Office. Well, actually, that's the way it used to work. Uh, back a few versions, the work server would work directly with Microsoft Office. But now it actually goes through an intermediary module, and that's called the conversion engine. So the conversion engine, work servers work directly with the conversion engine, and the conversion engine starts up Microsoft Office. And the reason why we do this is that the conversion engine is designed to work specifically with Microsoft Office. So the conversion engine will start up Microsoft Office, hand over your Word document to Microsoft Office, usually Microsoft Word, and it'll say, hey, Microsoft Word, go ahead and turn this document into a PCL file. Now, I don't know if you're aware, but that's one of the basic functions of Microsoft Word. In fact, you can do this yourself. Just open up any document, go to, my, go to uh, uh, the print menu, print, uh, you know, file print, and uh, right up at the top, uh, kind of top right area of the uh, print dialog is a little checkbox that says print to file. And when you do that, you're going to end up with a PCL file. So that's what we're going to do. And the conversion engine is programmed to watch Microsoft Office do potentially bad things. So if Office sits there and waits for a while uh, with no response, then the conversion engine is programmed to kill Microsoft Office and try it again. And it'll try up to three times to get that to work. Because sometimes Microsoft Office will open up a prompt. You know the prompt. Um, you know, it, it opens up a letter and says, hey, it looks like you're trying to write a letter. 
Maybe you need some help with that. And it asks a yes, no question. Uh, so that happens less and less uh, with Office 2010 and 2007, but it was definitely an issue in Office 2000. Okay, so we're converting to PCL, and then we've got another piece that's in the work server that converts from PCL to TIFF. Okay, great. So now we've got some TIFF files, and those TIFF files get stored on the file system. Actually, they get stored in C, Program Files, Write Facts, and then there's a series of directories here. One of them is Image. And if you look inside the Image directory, you'll see a bunch of files that have uh, usually, you know, for outgoing files, it might be 0, 0, 0, 0, a bunch of zeros. Um, let's say 1F. Dot 301 for the first page, 302, 303, 304 for each page in the facts. So we've got our image file, and now we need to hand it off to the facts board. Well, to do that, we go through another module, and that module is called doc Okay, so that module is called doc transport. And the server module talks to doc transport, and doc transport talks to the fax board. Okay. Um, so now the document is sent from web util or fax util. It goes through RPC module or remoting to the server, gets converted to the image file in, uh, uh, let's say in this case, it's a bunch of zeros, let's say 1f.301. We also store some metadata in the SQL Server database. So that metadata represents this image file. And then the server hands both the metadata and the image file to doc transport. Doc transports works with the fax board drivers to send this document out to the real world. Okay, great. Now, basically when a fax comes in, we go through almost the opposite process. Fax is received here at the fax board and works with doc transport to hand it off to the server. The server stores information in the database and the file system and processes it and does something with it. Well, you know, I mentioned that uh, the SQL server usually goes through this database module to talk to the server. That's not always true. Actually, doc transport will communicate with the SQL server directly. So we've kind of got a little dotted line between SQL Server and Doc Transport. So whenever Doc Transport answers the call, it actually communicates with the SQL Server to see if it's allowed to answer the call. And if SQL Server for some reason isn't available, Doc Transport just won't answer. So you really want to make sure that SQL Server is always available. And that's why it's a good idea to probably have, you know, maybe a cluster of SQL servers involved you know, whatever that looks like. Um, but that's on the SQL Server side, not so much on the WriteFact side. But we want to make sure SQL Server is always available. Now, generally, Microsoft SQL Server is pretty good about staying up, but we really want to make sure that's available. Okay, so how about if a fax comes in and the user doesn't want to receive faxes in FaxUtil or WebUtil, but rather wants to receive them in Outlook. Well, we can do that in several different ways, but the main way is using the email gateways. So I'm gonna draw email gateway. So there's a module called the email gateway module the server can communicate with. And actually it can be set up in three main ways with WriteFax version 10. We've got SMTP, got Exchange, and we've got Lotus Notes. And all three of those uh, work really, really well. And you know, they're all three of these are going to work with their respective email servers. Uh, so we're going to hand off 
uh, the fax to the email gateway or to the email servers, whether it's SMTP, Exchange, or Lotus Notes. Also from, from say Outlook or Lotus Notes or an SMTP client like uh, I use Sparrow or uh, Thunderbird or a few others, you can send faxes to the right back server. And basically the email gateway picks up those emails and hands them off to the server for the server to process. Well, that's kind of a, a basic view of all the services, all the major services that are part of WriteFax. I'm uh, just looking through my list to see if there's any other services that I should mention. Well, I guess there are. There's actually uh, you know, another service that's sometimes involved, not so much in the sending of faxes, but just in the general use of WriteFax, and that is the sync module. And the sync module will work with Active Directory or LDAP. And basically what it does is take accounts in Active Directory or in LDAP and synchronize them into the server. It's never going to go the other way around. It's always from Active Directory to the server or from LDAP to the server. Uh, and and you know we can bring in users actually, you know from Active Directory maybe from different organizational units uh, all the people in the sales organizational unit are going to be brought in with a sales cover sheet uh, all the users from a marketing organizational unit will be brought in with a marketing cover sheet and so forth really really flexible let's see what else do I need to draw. I think that's really there. There's there are some other modules uh, that uh, you can use with WriteFax. There is the uh, alerts and monitors. Um, there is the EDC module. There is the uh, what else can go here? Paging, queue services. Uh, SAP, lots of other modules, but I don't want to make this diagram too complex. Oh, there is one other uh, module that's involved with emails, and it's often people often get confused about what it's for. And that other module is called eTransport. So I'm going to write that here. Write it eTransport. Draw a little box around that guy. Uh, so the server module will talk to the e-transport module, and it's different than the email gateway. Even if you have an email gateway set up, we may still use e-transport. And the idea is that for outgoing SMTP mails that are not for this, but you know, in FaxUtil, you can open it up and send an email from FaxUtil. It's been there, it's been in the product for a long, long time. When you send an email with fax util, we go through this e-transport module. You know, when are you gonna do that? Well, if you use certified delivery, certified delivery is going to create a special website and going to send out an email. Well, we send that email using the e-transport module. Uh, and then that is going to communicate to some sort of SMTP server that could be on the same machine or somewhere else. But that's generally all the different services that work with uh, WriteFax. Now, let's see if I can find another pen. Let's use a pencil for this. There's a pencil. There we go. Now, that's a lot of services and a lot of services that, uh, you know, if any one of these goes down, maybe it's going to affect whether you send faxes out or not. So how can we split this up uh, maybe onto other machines if you want to have a fully redundant uh, write fax server? Well, obviously the clients are going to be on separate machines. And actually these fax boards, they could also be on separate machines. You know, I could have Doc transport, and I could have a lot of remote doc transports. So these would be called remote doc transport. 
I could also have remote work servers. And again, we use the term remote, remote work server. And I can have up to 15 of these guys if I want. I only need one, and that one could be on the right back server, but I could split it out like that. And obviously the SQL server is gonna be on its own uh, set of machines. You're probably not going to put that on a right back server. Um, what else do we have? You know, this file share or file system, NAS, SAN, you know, that could be something somewhere else and that could be fully redundant as well. So that could be somewhere else. And the email gateways, those are probably on different machines. So we do have a few key services that are running on the right back server. And so we can split that out a little bit. There's a few different ways that we can uh, uh, make write facts redundant. And I'll talk about that in a different video. So I hope this was interesting for you. My name is Matt Williams. And I am the international trainer for the Facts and Document Distribution Group. You can contact me on Twitter. And on Twitter, I go by the name Tech No Man -ja List. So definitely contact me there and stay, stay on the Facts Talk site. TV and watch some more videos. I hope this was interesting and I look forward to seeing you in another video. Bye.